forward. Here we go. Um, and again, if you have a question as I'm moving along on this chat, I'll try to remember to look at the chat. I usually get a little flag when it, someone chats or just unmute yourself and say, hey, Parker, I got a question. Okay. What we need to get done right now is make sure people are uh, on task and, and you know, feeling like they're going to get something out of the prep assignments for week one and the lesson assignment. So usually with the preps, I provide more background information. This prep here was just stuff I hoped you remembered from a previous math class. Now, some of you that might have been last year, some of you might have been two years ago, or maybe it was 20 years ago that you had your last math class. So it, this could be really hard or really easy depending on what you remember. So let's get it started. And so I'm just gonna do a couple of examples here, um, and then I'm gonna break us into groups to do a, a slightly more interesting problem. Uh, so, I had a whole bunch of questions about this over the weekend that people that started this early and good job starting it early. If you're just starting it today when it's due, you're kind of late. Um, so start it on time. It says here, we're gonna play with linear stuff. So that's equations that look like this and the points line up. Quadratic stuff has a square in it and it curves like a U, although half of this U is not visible. And then exponential, which is the variable is in the power position. And that looks kind of, I, I think this looks like a hockey stick to me. Not a very good one, but it's a hockey stick like. So we have parabola, this U-shaped quadratic. We have exponential, this hockey stick. And then we have these lines. So maybe some of you took the previous class, Quantlet 1, and you did this in lesson 2.7. Maybe you took uh, an algebra class, and hopefully at some point in your algebra career, you graphed lines, you graphed parabolas, and maybe you graphed exponentials um, at some point in your past. Uh, I got so many questions about this that I added a link to the 2.7 lesson in case you didn't take Math 62, so you can see what the heck is in lesson 2.7. And this is the paper version of it which just goes over how do you plot points? Um, how do we plot points with big numbers? You gotta scale your axes right. So this is not assigned. This is just there if you wanted to see what the heck lesson 2.7 was. Um, so like I taught Math 62 last year, which is one prerequisite for this class. This is the stuff I went over, uh, these different kinds of graphs. So if, if this stuff, like your mind was blank on it, here is a page that has some tutorial information related to this prep assignment. All right, so I'm just kind of moving along quickly here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the navigation here and jump to the first question. And I got a bunch of questions about this one. And part was, you know, this system might be new to you and some of the questions were, were not reading directions carefully. So first it says, what family equation this is? Is it quadratic, exponential, linear? And on the previous page, I, I kind of mentioned what makes something linear, quadratic, or exponential. Does anyone have a guess on why I should make a choice here that you want to chat or voice in? Come on. Uh, is, it, is, it, is it linear? It is linear. Ooh, that was a cool echo. Okay. So why is it linear? There's many ways to answer that. Uh, it's linear because it's y equals mx plus b. That's an excellent answer. Yep, that's one way to respond. It's in the right format. Uh, here's my m and here's my b over there. Another way would be to, well, calculate some points in the table here and then plot the points and see if they line up. Now, what I'm doing is before I even hit the table or this grid here, I'm whipping out a piece of paper. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to take a quick screenshot of this. So I hope you all have paper right now. And uh, maybe your version of this problem, or maybe you're going to do my version. Okay, so let's see. We did the housekeeping stuff. Now we're going to have fun with patterns. Let's blow this sucker up. So I think this is linear. So I'm just on my piece of paper. Uh oh, my pen died. Pen, come back. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a little note to myself. I think this is linear, right? 
And on my piece of paper, I can't do a screenshot like that. So I would actually write y equals 3x plus 4. I would label this as prep 3.1, problem number 1. Um, it's good to have good notes to look back for when you're taking a test, right? Because um, you want to do well on those tests. Uh, and then I was told to make a table. And they gave me some x's. I think it was negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And I need to figure out what the heck y is. A trick when you're doing this kind of thing is when you plug in for x, use parentheses. So I would write on my paper three times negative two plus four. And, and, and the, the parentheses are most important if you have negatives or fractions. And sorry, I have an extra parenthesis there. And let's see, three times negative two. And you could just whip out your calculator right here if you want. That's totally cool. We talked about calculators a little bit last week. So let's get a calculator. Um, Desmos is one I use a lot. I think I mentioned Desmos to you guys. And in this case, I'm gonna pick the Desmos graphing calculator. And oh, what is all this shit? I clicked the right button. Huh. Whoa, anyone else get this in Desmos? Is anyone else trying Desmos with me? That's weird. Why did that happen? I'm, I'm using Desmos, but none of that is on mine. None of that happened. I must have hit a wrong button or something. Or Desmos remembered me and I was screwing around with this earlier. Uh, let's go to Desmos here. Weird, the internet's messing with me today. Okay, so here I can do things like I could just type, what was it, three times parentheses, negative two plus four. And if I type that right, yeah, three, three times x plus four. So I can, I can type individual things that says negative two. Uh, so I can put that on my paper. Or in the Desmos graphing calculator, I can just type y equals 3x plus 4, and it graphs the whole thing for me and shows me a couple of points that I can click on. Now, we're not going to do a lot of graphing like this in this class. This isn't an algebra class, but my thought was most of you had an algebra class recently, so I just refresh your memory on it. Um, my, my bigger point here is do your work on paper, please. Okay, so this gives me negative 6 plus 4, which is negative 2. Um, a lot of us like to do stuff in our heads, like uh, say, oh, x is negative one, three times negative one plus four is one. On a test, on homework, that's awesome, right? Good exercise for your brain. Don't do that on a test because you don't know if you screwed up. How do you look back at your thoughts? Not easy. So write on the test. Do it in your homework to practice being ready for that test. So three times negative one is negative three plus four, I lost three, I gained four, I think I still have one, right? So I'm getting those values. Three times zero plus four would be zero plus four or four. I feel safe doing that one in my head. Three times one plus four. Um, so you may, some of you may look at this and say that's wicked easy. Others might look at this and go, oh shit, I forgot to do that. Kind of getting it. So again, if I go too fast, say, whoa, slow down. So that's what, get that extra parenthesis again. Six plus four is 10. Okay, so I got those values. And so then I would start typing them in that system. Um, since I need to make a graph, you know, I might make the graph on paper first. So sketch a grid on paper. Ooh, those aren't straight lines. Make believe they are, mark off one, two, three, or whatever numbers you need. Something like that. I need some negative numbers here. I should whip out my ruler for help. All right, so let me see. Negative two went with negative two, which would be down here somewhere. I should label these, right? Negative two, positive two, positive two. And then negative one went with one. So here's negative one. There's one big point there. Zero went with four, which on my graph would be up here. Um, and this I was thinking was linear. So my points should be lining up. You have a couple of options if they don't line up. If they don't line up, like they don't quite hit the line you're drawing, then what you should do is make them bigger so they hit the line. All right, everyone get that? That's a joke. Don't do that. If they don't hit the line, like they're out here, don't make it bigger. 
okay? I'm just kidding. They should pretty much line up if you did it right. So what was my next one? One, seven. So that's four, five, six, seven would be about up here. One is right there. Yeah, that seems reasonable, right? One, seven. I think I'm doing okay. Now back to the screen where I have to enter my answer. So I'm looking at my notebook paper and I say, oh yeah, okay. So negative two is negative two. Again, you're, you might have not have the same problem as me, beware. For negative one, I got one. For zero, I got four. For one, I got seven. And then for two, what did I get? 10, I think. Uh, if you remember anything about linear equations, this three right here is called the slope. And so if I go back to my page, just kind of to double check that three, m equals three, that's my slope. So this is review. Slope is rise over run. And so my rise would be three, my run would be one. So if I just double check that with my highlighter, for every three I go up, I better go over one to stay on the line, right? Up three over one. So my slope does seem to be working here, right? As far as the table goes, check this out. Would you agree on the table, I'm jumping by one each time for the X values, right? That's my run. My rise is supposed to be what here? Three. So then these numbers from negative two to one, that should be a jump of three. From one to four, that should be a jump of three. From four to seven, that should be a jump of three. Okay, so there's my slope in the table. Here's my slope in my graph, up three over one. So uh, my hope is you remembered that from your past life in math. If you didn't, don't sweat it. This assignment isn't due until tonight. You have a chance to do it now. Now here's where some people had trouble. It says graph the equation by plotting two points. Important, you can only plot two points. You can't use all of them. So pick the two you like that fit on this grid, right? My grid goes from negative eight to eight for X and negative eight to eight for Y. So I can't plot 210 here. So maybe I'm gonna do negative one, one and zero, four. You pick, it doesn't matter which two you pick. Um, I gotta make sure I'm doing a line, not a parabola or quadratic and not an exponential. So I am on the line tool and then just carefully find, see where I want again, negative one, one, click, and then move over, let's see what do I want next, zero, four, and click. Now before I submit this, I just wanna double check this matches what I had on paper. Okay, and on my paper, I had that point one seven. Now I can't plot it here because it says two points and I already have my two points, but can you see on my picture that the point one seven could be there, right? See, it sits at right at one seven. Okay, but if I plot it, what's gonna hit, watch what happens if I click again. If I click again, it's gonna wanna do another line. Oh shit, I don't want that line. Stop it, too many lines, clear. So these tools are a little tricky. You get some take, you get to get, you know, you get to get used to it. So negative one, one is the one I wanted to plot. And maybe I'll do one seven this time. Pick any two points from your table, but only two. Notice that zero four is still there. It doesn't matter that there's not a point. Okay. And then submit and pray. Oh, I got something wrong. What did I get wrong? Oh, I forgot to click linear. But cool thing, you get three tries, click linear and submit again. And now I've got 100%, okay? All right, so uh, the problems uh, on this assignment were to just, here's an equation. Can you calculate some Y values on a piece of paper, graph it first, and then try and put the graph on here, right? And so there were just a whole bunch of these I wanted you to try. Uh, can you match which one is quadratic, which one is linear, which one is exponential based on looking at the picture? And recall on page one, instruct, or sorry, yeah, page one where the instructions were, I give examples of those. So um, some of these problems have videos. If there's not a video attached and you're just stuck, hit message your instructor. So when you're working on a problem, message your instructor is the way you get in touch with me on it. That's better than using the inbox over here. When I write back to you, 
your message, your mailbox right here will have a one on it.